Hello everyone, it's me Jamie and welcome back to my channel and welcome to a stitch with me where I am working on Game of Thrones which is a limited edition chart from Tilt and Crafts and it's no longer available anymore on their site and in this video what I am doing is I am going to eventually be converting this chart over to tent stitch which is a half stitch but when I started it I started it one over one full cross and I am a parker so the first thing that I need to do is I need to work in all of my parked threads that are parked with one strand and then I will be converting it to a tent stitch and one of the things too that's going to change is when I park my threads with one strand doing full cross I park in the bottom left corner and so the top leg of my stitch is going from the bottom right to the top left so when I am parking doing tent stitch I will be parking in the right bottom right corner of the stitch so I really need to get these um, parked threads that are parked in the bottom left out of the way because they are going the wrong way from what my tent stitch will be when I get started tenting this project so right now I am actually doing a voiceover for this video I had recorded it yesterday and my kids were home so you'll notice that there are times where like the stitching angle changes and it's because I had to get up and go do stuff for them and so I'm doing a voiceover and I'm actually stitching while I do the voiceover and I am working on Kita doing my daily 30 stitching on her Kita is from Pinky the Pink artwork by Hannah Alexander and I really want to get her finished this year so I'm really trying to work on her as much as possible I'm also trying to make it more enjoyable to stitch on Kita and so there are some areas that are supposed to use DMC metallic and I have switched uh, one of the areas into DMC Etoile which is slightly less sparkly than the metallic but it's a lot more enjoyable to stitch with it's more like a normal floss and so it's just made it so much better there was one area where it's supposed to be over a thousand stitches using the DMC metallic and I was just like there's no way that I will get that area finished if I use the metallic I will just put it off forever because I don't like stitching with it and part of why I don't like stitching with it is I just feel like my stitches don't look very good with the metallic and I try and do things like I use shorter lengths of thread I use beeswax and they still just don't look they don't lay as smoothly and I think it's just because of the way that the metallic has kind of like a almost I don't want to say plasticky but almost like a plasticky feel to it it's not a smooth uh, floss so it just doesn't look as nicely when I stitch with it so I've switched that color to a DMC etoile and I think that I will switch if there's any more areas that are large areas with metallic in this chart I'm also going to switch them to something else and not use the DMC metallic just because I don't like it and I think I might do the same thing for Link and Zelda whenever I stitch them I don't think I will use the called for metallics I might just try and switch in a etoile that is in a similar color just because they're so nice to stitch with and they're not as sparkly as a metallic floss but they are still pretty sparkly so it's good enough for me anyways I think for this stitch with me what I'm going to do is I'm going to do half of it with talking and then I will do the second half with music so if you are someone who enjoys to just have music playing in the background then you can go to the second half of this stitch with me and then the first half will just be me talking about whatever comes to mind so like I was thinking about talking about Game of Thrones because the chart that you're seeing me stitch on is Game of Thrones so it's just like a perfect little tie in there so for Game of Thrones I was like super obsessed with it for a while I started reading the books first and the show had already come out I think there was like two seasons of the show when I was reading the book so I read the books and then after that I decided to get the show at the time I didn't have HBO so I actually bought the blu-rays because they were like on sale at Best Buy or something so I bought the blu-rays after I read the books and I loved the show and I feel like the books were really like surprising like they may not be everyone's like favorite thing I get that 
but I feel like the characters were really well done and it just did a lot of things that you didn't expect to happen. Like, this is going to be spoilers. If you haven't, like, read the books or watched the shows, you might not want to hear this, but I feel like if at this point you haven't watched the show or read the books, you probably just don't want to because I know there are some people out there who just, they're not interested, so. But, like, when Ned dies in the first book, I was so shocked. Like, I remember I stayed up super late reading that book. It was like two in the morning. I was reading with like one of those Kindle fires that had like the lamp or the light that was like attached to the case because at that time Kindle fires didn't have like their own backlight. So you had to have a light attached. And it was like two in the morning and I'm reading in the dark with just this little light on. And I was just like, no, when he actually died. I was shocked that they actually killed the main character because like that first book was just so heavy on him and so I was just like I couldn't believe it and I, it, the book like the books just kept doing that where just no main character was safe at all and I ended up I like both the show and the books because I know sometimes there are differences and things where you end up liking one and not the other an example is something like Outlander I like Outlander the show. I started reading the books and I hate the way that Jamie is in the books. I hate it. Hate, 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 hate. But anyways, back to Game of Thrones. So I like both of them, but I also don't know about some of the changes. So like in the books, Catelyn Stark is resurrected. She is still around. She is Lady Stoneheart and she wants revenge for what happened to Rob at the wedding so the show doesn't have that and so it's just kind of like how are these last books going to be different from the show because there are different characters around in both of them you know and so I'm just kind of looking forward to whenever we get another book from George R. R. Martin but who knows when that will be and um yeah so like I was obsessed read all that stuff did all that and then I ended up making one of my Animal Crossing islands on my 3DS Game of Thrones themed. It was amazing. <laughs> and so um, on the 3DS, my Animal Cross island was called Valeria. My character was Daenerys. It was great. It was cute. And then on the Switch, I have two islands on Switch. I have one Switch that has an island that is like kind of Disney slash cross stitch themed. And my character is Lilo, my island is Stitch, and then my second one, which is like newer, and I haven't done as much with it, so I really would like to. Like most of what I have is just like plans for this island because it's I'm still poor on this island. I don't have a lot of resources yet. I need to work my way up. But my second island on my Switch is... Um, it's a Game of Thrones theme because I just couldn't resist. And this time I went with Cersei, which like, I don't like Cersei, but it's just fun to pretend to have this island be her island. So I think the island is just called Westeros. I'm pretty sure I just call it Westeros. And like, I'm making an area that's going to be like where her house gets moved. And it's like at the top layer, you know, because there's different levels in Animal Crossing. And hers is on going to be on the top layer. I've already started putting like fencing around it and it's great. And that's supposed to be like the red keep area, kind of like where the castle is, it's King's Landing. And then I've also made an area that's kind of like flea bottom. And so it's kind of like I grouped like a whole bunch of villagers together, like really closely. And that's kind of like where like the peasants are kind of. And like this sounds mean, but like it's just funny to be like running around as her. And just yelling to myself, like, more wine! Because, it, like, Cersei was just all about the wine in, like, the last few seasons of Game of Thrones. And it's, I don't know, it's fun. I enjoy making, like, my video games have to do with shows and stuff that I like. And she dresses, like, in red and gold all the time. And she's just, she's a lot of fun. I don't like her character, like I said. Like, I don't think anyone really likes Cersei, but you, you love to hate her. So uh, another show that I have done in a game is in Stardew Valley. 
I couldn't think, I can never think of character names. That's why I steal names from shows because like, it'll be like, name this, name that. And I'm like, I can't, I'm not that creative. So in Stardew Valley, I named my farm after the last kingdom TV show, which is a show on Netflix. And it's also books, but I haven't read the books yet. And I loved that show. And so I named my farm Bebenberg, which is the place in the show that Uhtred wants to like get back. And then I named the dog Uhtred because like I like Uhtred, but he also made a lot of bad decisions in the show. So I was like, you can be the dog. And then my character was Brita because I loved Brita in the show. And I feel like she got like the short end of the stick a lot of the time. Like things were just not fair for Brita. So that is my character in Stardew Valley. And yeah, I've actually used her Brita for multiple things. Like I have a Skyrim character that's named Brita. I had a Skyrim character that was named Largatha, which is the main character from Vikings. I really like Vikings. Which, speaking of Vikings, um, Thread Geeks has a new artist and they asked for um, what artwork people would want converted from into stitching. And the new artist has some charts or artwork that is Vikings themed and I am hoping that they will convert the Vikings artwork into a chart. And I'm also hoping there was a Bridgerton one and I love the colors for the Bridgerton one. Like, I like Bridgerton, like, it's fine, whatever, but the artwork, it was blues and purples, and I love blues and purples, which is just a thing. Like, Kita, I'm stitching on her now, her dress is blue, my fabric is purple. I love blues and purples, so I'm also hoping that that Bridgerton artwork will end up as a cross-stitch chart. That would be amazing, even though I'm not starting things right now. I'm actually thinking that my next new start... And possibly a new purchase will be, um, I might do a new start for my birthday, which isn't until July, so that's a long time. Like, we'll see if I can hold out that long. Like, uh, it might work, it might not. Right now, I'm not really wanting to start things still, though. And I don't really have time in my stitching schedule to start things. So, for March, I'm just kind of stitching whatever. April, I want to try and finish the Very Viking Stitch Along, and the Crystal Palace chart. And then in May, I plan on doing Monogamous May, where I only work on the color 310. So any chart that has 310 I could work on, which would also work because I know that Kaylee Tent Stitch is talking about doing a Maxine Gad challenge for May. And I have a Maxine Gad chart that has quite a bit of black in the background, so I could still work on black in that chart. So... That means I don't have any room for a new star there. And then I could possibly start something in June, but I don't know, there's nothing going on in June. And so, like I said, I'm thinking July would be the soonest time that I plan on doing starts, but I really want to see what I can finish before then. So it's all up in the air. Um, I know I talked about wanting to start Link though, because the new Zelda game comes out in May, which I'm not planning on starting that Zelda game right away. I still have not finished Breath of the Wild. I started it, but I didn't finish it because that is kind of a trend. You'll notice with even like with video games, I'm kind of the same as I am with cross stitch. I start things and I play them for a while and then I start more things and I don't finish a lot of things. So I've started Breath of the Wild, haven't finished it. I will most likely buy the new Zelda game though because my oldest son loved Breath of the Wild absolutely loved it. And he also played Link's Awakening. He's played some of the older Zelda games because he has the, that, that Nintendo system that they came out with that's like really small and you can, it has older Nintendo games on it. Plus we modded it or whatever. So it has a lot more games than what was originally on it. Um, so he has that. And so he's played a lot of Zelda he hasn't said that he wants to play it yet, but I'm guessing that as it gets closer, he might get, you know, more excited about it. 
but I don't know if I'll actually start that link one though because like I said Kita needs to get finished first. She is top priority for the Pinky the Pink charts. She needs to get done soon. I've been saying that Kita needs to get done for like a couple of years at this point so it really needs to happen. It would just be nice to start length though because I do have the fabric. I don't have anything else though. And for these charts, the way that I'm doing Kita is I have my floss cards made and the threads, there's blended colors and I have the blended colors like on a floss card together. So I have all the blends like done. And so I don't have to like put them together as I'm stitching. And so for link, I would have to do all of the getting the floss cards ready. Um, figure out what metallics I would need to switch to the etoile because that is what I would use because it's just it's so much nicer than metallic threads and then also beads these charts I, don't, I haven't looked to see how many beads he uses but I know Kita uses quite a few beads so I would need to see what I would need for that too and I need more of this color I'm using. The other thing too for Link is um, right now I'm actually stitching Kita using Pattern Keeper. You can't see the back stitching in Pattern Keeper so you can only see the crosses, cross stitches. And I know that if you email uh, the person who designs the charts you can get a cross stitch saga file. And when you use that, it shows the back stitching. So for Link, I am going to be getting the file for the Saga uh, app so that I can stitch it there instead. I know a lot of people say it's a lot better because you can actually see the back stitching in it. When I want to do the back stitching for Kita, I do have it printed so I can look at the paper chart or I just look at the PDF because the printed chart, the coloring is slightly different. So a lot of the back stitching, it's you know, colored lines like a bright green and a dark purple. And when it printed out, they printed it in a slightly different shade. And so it's harder to tell some of the kind of similar colors apart on the printed one. So it's better to use the PDF for me at least. And I have a knot I need to get out. Mm, anyway, so other things that I would like to start throughout the year, because I've already talked kind of about wanting to start Link. I would also sometime this year like to start um, Heather Confetti Stitcher is stitching a Disneyland map chart and I really would like to start that because I'm a huge Disney adult. I love Disney. It is truly the happiest place on earth. It's the only place I want to go on vacation and I would love to like eventually stitch the map. I will also wish, nowhere has it, but I wish that there was also a map of California Adventure because I love California Adventure. Um, I almost prefer California Adventure over Disneyland. So if you don't know, Disneyland Park is kind of separated into two parks. They're on like the same property, but you have to exit the Disneyland gates to go into California Adventure. And California Adventure has my family's favorite rides probably. So we went to Disneyland in 2021, I think. And... We didn't do a park hopper pass, so we had to do one park per day, but we were there, I think it was a five-day ticket, and we actually ended up picking to do California Adventure three days, Disneyland for two days, because we love California Adventure so much. So California Adventure has like the area where it's cars themed, so the movie Cars, and it is amazing, and it has the best ride. Okay, it's not the best, but it's like one of the best rides, the Cars ride. And so there's that one. There's also the Guardians of the Galaxy ride, which used to be the Tower of Terror. 
And that ride is also so much fun. Um, my kids hated it the first time they went on it. And then the next day was a Disneyland day and they were asking to go on that ride again, even though they like screamed so bad the first time they went on it. But then the next day they wanted to go on it again. And that ended up being one of the rides that we went on the most because they kept wanting to go back on it. And then there's also the Grizzly Water Ride there, which is also another favorite. Um, one of the times we went, at night it was pretty cold, and so there wasn't a huge lineup for that ride. And we went on it so many times because you could just walk off and just get right back on, like, right away. And so we just kept going on it, and we were soaked. It was kind of cold, but it was so much fun because we love that ride. My kids really want to go on the Incredicoaster, but the last time we were there, they were too short. So now that's kind of like all they talk about is wanting to go on that ride. So that'll be interesting because I don't think they know what to expect because they've never been on anything like that one. It's a big roller coaster. It goes upside down and the way it starts off is like you are fully stopped and then all of a sudden it just goes really fast. And I like it, but um, my oldest has went on it before and he doesn't really like it that much. And I know that it's not a hit with like, I went one time with my family and I think most of us liked it, but that ride did have the most people who kind of like sat off and did not want to go on it. But yeah, all that to say that I really wish there was a, Dis or a California Adventure map because I would love to stitch that. And it would also be really pretty because California Adventure has the wheel with Mickey Mouse's face on it, so that would be really cool to see too. But I will settle for the Disneyland map because I am a Disney person. I love it. I also at some point would like to do a golden kite, which... Golden kites have a lot of blended threads for most of them. There are options to get it without the blended threads, but the blended thread version usually looks better in the mock-up. So, I mean, do you get the blended thread version, which will obviously take longer, but look better? Or do you go with the solid color just because it's technically easier? I would like to eventually try to do blended thread, but... We will see. I've been keeping my eye on their charts though because I would like to stitch some charts from other designers. So Golden Kite is one where I'd like to stitch one of their charts eventually. I also would eventually like to get a chart. Kaylee Tent Stitch has a website called The Sewing Shop where she has charts and um, there's a couple charts that I've been looking at from there because they're so colorful. I love the colors because a lot of my charts some of them are kind of dark like game of thrones there's not a lot of color in this chart and so looking at charts that are colorful it's just like it looks fun like if you're stitching something for years and years and years you want it to be colors you like and there's a couple there's one called gumption and it's a lot of blues and i love love blues so that was one eventually. I, I just have like a list of designers that I eventually would like to try. I eventually would like to do a Dimensions, which I think I, I talked about in my last video. That Dimensions is kind of on the list, but it's also kind of scary because of how time consuming they are. And then it's also a paper chart, which most of what I do now is Pattern Keeper. But I really just want to start trying other places because then there's also unconventional cross stitch. I've been looking at their website. I have like a little wish list there too of what I, I eventually might want. But I'm trying to finish some of what I have and I would eventually like to have only like one or two charts from each company that I'm working on. Because right now I have like three or four from Charting Creations. And I love charting creations, but I also feel like because I have so many of their charts right now, I don't have a lot of room to start other things. So I want to kind of get it, uh, get my whips down to where I only have one or two from each company. And then it gives me room to kind of spread out because there's a lot more full coverage charting companies now than there used to be. 
and I would like to stitch something just to try them all out, see how they all are, because they all have a lot of different art styles, so there's a lot more options. Like back when I started cross-stitching, there wasn't a lot, so I started cross-stitching. I learned how when I was 18, and then I kind of took a break because there wasn't a lot of kits that I liked available in stores, and at the time the internet wasn't like a huge thing that I thought of, you know? I didn't think of going to the internet to order things back in like 2007. So I was just kind of getting whatever they had at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, not Hobby Lobby because we didn't have Hobby Lobby back then. It was not in my county then. So it was Michael's, Joann's, and Walmart had like a really small cross stitch section. And so I ended up taking a break from cross stitch because there wasn't a lot available. And then I started again, I think it was in like 2011, I got a Thomas Kincaid Disney kit, which was Pinocchio. It was, tw I think 2011, it was either 2011 or 2012, one of those years. I got my Pinocchio kit, which was like, I didn't like a lot of the smaller kits that were available in stores at the time. So when I saw that, it was like the first kind of thing that was in the realm of things I liked. I liked Disney, so that was good. I liked the full coverage aspect because at the time I didn't realize what full coverage stitching really was, but I liked that it was a fully stitched chart and that it looked more like a realistic thing and it wasn't super cutesy because a lot of what was in stores at the time was like baby samplers and stuff like that, which there's nothing wrong with those, but it was just not something that I was wanting to stitch at the time. So I found that, and then, then I stitched on just the Pinocchio kit for a long time. It was like I was a one, one whip person at the time, and then I ended up finding Heaven and Earth Designs in 2012, which is when I got Tarot Town 2, and that was my first ever thing that I kitted up myself, which was an experience because I didn't know anything like back at that time. At that time, I had only stitched on like 14 count and 18 count and I ended up ordering 22 count for Tarot Town 2 because I saw people recommend it because they said it was like similar to um, 18 count. It wasn't like an even weave and that it wasn't too small and hard to see so I was like I'll do the 22 count because that's what people said and then I ended up not really liking it because um, it was too thick but you, you learn as you stitch more. But yeah, back then there wasn't a lot, so I knew about Heaven and Earth back then. I did not really get into other companies though until it was like 2017, 2018 when I started finding like Tilt and Crafts and Charting Creations and all those places. And then now it just seems like there's more and more places that you can get full coverage charts. And so it's like you have so many options now and you can find stuff for pretty much like any subject. So. A long time ago, I never thought that I would be able to have, like, a Kingdom Hearts chart, and now I have, like, my Keyblades to the Kingdom stitch along, and I never thought that there would be, you know, uh, charts for, like, shows that I like, and now I have so many, and so it's just, it's fun to find how different things are getting for stitching, and what it used to be like, where there used to just be what was in the craft store, and that was your options. And I think that for the rest of this video, because I just realized I've been talking for like almost 30 minutes, uh, will be just music. So if you uh, only enjoy talking, then you might not want to watch the last part. If you only enjoy music, you can keep on listening and there will be music until the end. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll be back with another stitch with me to start the uh, tent stitch part of converting this chart. So I'm almost done with the tents or the full crosses that needed to be parked. And so then I can get started tenting and I can also get back to the diagonal because when I was working in the parked threads, I didn't care about the diagonal. I just wanted to finish those threads. And so I'll be getting back to diagonal stitching and I'll be part or tenting. So look out for that video whenever it comes. And thank you for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. And I will see you all next time. Bye.